Hello, this is Mr. Jim from GlassHoppa.com. Today with one genus of fused glass garden art. These are fun guys. They don't take up mushroom and like the rest of your botanical progeny, they grow on you. In a previous segment we made these cute little mini mushroom lamps, cleverly using a bottleneck and simple nightlight hardware. Today we'll make a few modifications and take the concept outdoors. The main difference for outside or for potted plants is in the stem. Instead of a bottleneck, we'll go with this cheap PVC pipe, cut one end to a sharp point, use cold fusion to attach a rubber stopper, and viola! Now, like I said last time, for the caps, you can make any design you want using any technique you like. Then we focused on frit blends and powder patching. This time, I want to try a little variation on the powder patching technique. I'm sizing to fit a 5 inch diameter rice bowl mold for slumping. Same as before. I've cut two 5 inch circles. We demoed that last time. Stacked them white on top of clear and glued them together. Then I prepared my powders. This is a soft yellow mix. I'll give you the proportions in a minute. I like to put down a thin film of generic aloe vera gel so the powder will have something to stick to. Then I'll apply a layer of yellow to cover. Doesn't need to be too thick, just healthy. This mix of marigold, amber, and clear makes a softer yellow hue. Not near as bright as yellow alone. Now we'll patch in some medium amber powder. By patching I mean more or less random splotches of color. Kind of like a camouflage pattern. And last, chestnut powder for extra variety. Now I'm going to borrow a favorite trick of decorative painters, the sponge. This is a piece of natural sponge I picked it up in an art supply store. I've also seen them at paint stores and home centers in the paint department. I'll wet it, wring it of excess water, then roll it lightly across the powdered surface. The goal is to disrupt the material in an organic looking way. I'm careful not to slide the sponge, but to roll and lift it at the end. Between rolls, I shake the powder off. Sometimes I'll use a soft bristle brush, in this case my mother's toothbrush. No need to press hard, no need to linger. There are three colors here, four including the glass color, and they'll all show up in the finished piece. Simple, huh? I like this peacock color. I stack it on a piece of clear, and this time our contrasting powder color will be steel blue transparent. There's only two colors here, so I'll try to add some variation by applying the steel blue thicker in some areas and thinner in others. The thick areas should wind up darker, the thin areas lighter, and hopefully there'll be some gradation between the two. My thickest areas here are probably close to three millimeters, nearly an eighth of an inch. The thinnest barely covering the surface. Then the spongematic. Remember, between every roll and lift, I'm brushing off the powder that's stuck to the sponge. Sometimes I'll wet the sponge again and wring out the excess water. Roll and lift. Let's try a hot color combo with a white on clear base. We we'll use the same soft yellow mix, one part marigold, one part pale amber, and one part clear. Remember materials lists and firing schedules and other details are always on the blog. We'll lay down our layer of yellow, then patch in some orange transparent, 
then some tangerine and proceed with the organification process. Just looks like a mess, doesn't it? The stem is easy. PVC cuts nicely with a hacksaw, then use sandpaper to smooth up the edges and make it presentable. These look good. I'm not even going to lift them from the firing paper though because I want to add some sprots and tack them on in a second firing. Sprots, of course, are the peculiar protuberances that populate the perimeter of many wild fungi vitreosa. My sprouts are semi-uniform pieces of almond and ivory frit. The biggest pieces from a jar of medium grind or the small ones from a jar of coarse. A full fuse firing, a tack fuse firing, and now a slump. our finished glass mushroom caps. I picked up these rubber stoppers on Amazon. Make sure you size the stoppers correctly to fit the inside diameter of your stem. I'm using a hundred percent silicone here, same as we did for our little mushroom lampshades. Squeeze on a solid layer and smoosh it down. Then run a bead around the inside where the rubber stopper meets the glass. Then use a wet finger to press that bead down. Smooth it out. Just like you're caulking a bathtub. You let that cure for 24 hours and you're done. Once you make a couple of these they go really fast. It's a great little craft fair item. And don't forget to tell the ladies at the church bazaar that they're a perfect way to water their potted plants. Send cool refreshment straight to the roots. Sounds good anyway. And it might even be true. That'll do it.